Okay, cool. So, um, guys, thanks for jumping on. We'll keep letting people on here. It's uh, nine o'clock straight up here in uh, Colorado. I'm fighting a cold. I got my IU. IU's playing today. March Madness it kicks off today. Indiana's not going to get very far, but I'll root for them while I can. So anyway, <laughs> so, anyway, guys, thanks for uh, jumping on. You know, just a reminder, we do this every Tuesday morning, um, 11 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Mountain Time here in Colorado, where I'm at. Um, agents from all over the country, um, you know, mostly EXP agents, but open to all agents anywhere uh, as we do this. And uh, this morning, Andrew Vos, um, Colorado licensed, licensed in Florida. You in Florida right now, Andrew? I am. Yeah. Are you? There um, you go. Was, yeah, it's like pouring down rain. So I would oh, show you it? that. It's not that. Not anything pleasant to show you. Yeah, so. there you go. There you go. So anyway, um, Andrew's been with EXP now, what, three years, right? Just over. Yep. Three, three years, icon, uh, two years, um, and just, you know, building a big team, a, you know, a traditional team, also building a, a revenue share team with EXP, but uh, just doing some big, big things. Um, you won an award, didn't you, like a year ago or something with, with social media as an influencer or something? You got something, I remember, recognition for something. Yeah, with Property Spark. They interviewed me, um, so named like top five in the state, and then um, they did a separate like team leader interview. So Awesome, yeah. So very cool. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Go ahead. And I know you got a hard out here, you know, 30, 35 minutes for another meeting you got to go to. So totally appreciate your time. We'll, uh, yeah. you know, guys take notes. If you can turn on your cameras, if, if you can, if you're driving or something, don't worry about it, but you know, just plug in with us. Okay. Um, the more interaction we get, the more questions we can get later, the more discussion, the better this turns out to be always. So, um, just a reminder, mute yourself. Okay. If you got background noise, we're hearing you. So uh, make sure you mute yourself along the way. Andrew, go ahead, man. Take it away. Appreciate your time. Yeah, appreciate you having me. Uh, Sean, Jeff, everybody else. Appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, so how's everybody doing today? Smiling. Yeah, I'm trying to like adjust because I'm actually staying with a friend right now. I'm moving into a new condo in like 10 days. And like my whole schedule is kind of thrown off. No coffee. I don't know where anything is. My clothes are like in a corner. So I'm, if I'm a little low energy, it's just because I'm not used to not having coffee, but it's kind of telling me, I was reflecting with Jeff earlier that I probably need to cut back on the coffee if I'm so dependent on it right now. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'll jump right into it. Um, like, like Jeff said, um, been with the company three and a half years. Um, I don't know anything else besides what some people have told me. Um, and a lot of my business has been built online. Um, I was brand new to Colorado. Um, I was working a government job. And when I, when I moved there, I had never been stationed there or anything. So I had to make, I had to create friends. Um, sorry about that. I had to create like a network group of friends. Right. So I started joining uh, meetup groups for like Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and um, uh, kickball leagues and, you know, they actually recruited me off the kickball league for the kickball league because they were trying, they saw me and then they Instagram stalked me and saw that I won some championships in Florida. And they're like, we want you. I was like, all right. So they recruited me to be their friend, which was awesome, right? That's the best one. It's like a referral. Um, so that's kind of how I did it. And I just started posting every day, 10 to 15 times a day on um on story and all that stuff but i actually have a presentation for you guys um this is mainly for me to keep me on track um so so we are um in colorado and florida this is the florida logo because we were uh, i was giving it to a group in uh down here in the panhandle but some of the key components i feel are crucial in um, social media, building your, your, your network and nurturing and client base online and maintaining that um, after you close a house, right? Because the, the nurture and the client follow-up and all that is just as important as, you know, building that initial relationship. So we do it, um, do it we go through networking, um, social and internet leads, miscellaneous, weekly emails and newsletters. And if you guys have any questions in the middle, feel free to stop me. More than happy to answer any questions. Kind of, I, I prefer more of the interactive um, than just me talking. So um, I'm going to go through here. Oh, 
All right. So building your network. So what we do is we teach all of our agents and um, in ourselves to create a list of family and friends. And that is not your traditional like, you know, sales where you're going to go through all of them and you're going to say, hey, do you want to buy a house? Hey, do you want to buy a house? Hey, I just started. I'm a realtor. Do you want to buy a house? That's not the approach we take. We, we do it. We create the list of families and friends because it's, it helps you stay accountable because with accountability, you're just running ragged, right? You don't really know. You don't have any like set goals in mind or targets, or you don't have checklists, stuff like that. So, um, so what we teach is we want to help you get to the 5,000 friends. That's your max per personal page. So you want to try to max that out. So it allows you 50 per day, roughly, and you can go through. And what I recommend doing is finding people in, you know, forms and groups you're in that are in your local areas. Um, don't pick all realtors. Don't pick all, um, all non-realtors. So you want to try to have a mixture. I would do an 80-20 rule. 80% non-realtors, 20% um, realtors. Um, when you meet somebody, get their contact information, obviously phone number, email, all that stuff. But at the very least, have them add you on Instagram. And this is what I do. I say, hey, what do you prefer, Instagram or Facebook? I say, do you mind if I have your phone? And I find myself and I follow myself. And then I go meet immediately to my, my account in front of them and I follow them back. Um, so now, you know, now we're connected. Um, they physically would have to go in and, you know, say, Hey, I don't want to be that guy's friend or I want to unfollow him. Right. Which is fine because then that's probably somebody you don't want to associate with or work with in the uh, future. So a good practice is 50 rule, uh, per day, uh, 10 likes shares comments. A share is just taking somebody's post, pushing a little share button at the uh, bottom and sharing it. I share like funny stuff. I, I try to avoid uh, religious and uh, political stuff just because um, I don't want to show any bias, right? Um, my clients, I don't really care what their views are. My, my goal is to serve them, right? And get them the whatever the situation is. If we're selling, get them the most possible money or reach their goals if money is not their goal. And, or if it's a buyer, you know, get them the best possible deal while trying to save them money in this crazy market. Um, so comments, you know, if someone comments on your post, you should take five to 10 minutes at the end of the day and go back and re-comment to them. Be like, hey, thanks for the comment. And maybe ask another follow-on question. You know, keep the conversation going because the more comments and likes and shares you have on your post, the, the higher it stays on the feed when people are looking daily. Um, I've seen posts that I saw a week ago pop back up for me because people are commenting, liking, sharing on it. So uh, 10 chats or direct messages. Um, so those, I'm going to go through a way to do that, but we use a hunt, um, hunt farm cultivate. So hunting is like, you're going, you're going after the prayer, if you will, right? You're asking them for the business, right? Hey, are you looking to possibly sell your house or you and your wife's house in the next um, 12 to 24 months? The farm is, hey, not sure if you know I'm a realtor, but just wanted to reach out to you and say, hey, I'm a realtor. I'm here as a resource. If you know anybody looking to buy or sell in your neighborhood um, in the next 12 to 24 months, please think of me. And then there's the cultivate. The cultivate, I like the best, but you're going to use all three of them. The cultivate is, Hey, Jeff, I just saw your family just got back from the Grand Canyon. Uh, we've been looking to go. Do you got any suggestions or that those pictures looked amazing? You know, leave it at that. And then it will kind of they if they check their messages, they'll probably reply. Thanks. Or if they're, you know, or they may give you a longer answer and just keep the conversation going a little bit. Um, but they're not like supposed to be extended law taking up your whole day. So five five conversations per day, you know, those can be in person, those can be on social media. Um, and then one real conversation, the real conversation is like a cup of coffee, or lunch or something like that, just to get to know somebody. And I'm very intentional with my time, but I don't waste other people's time. And what I mean by that is, 
I make friends because I want to make friends. I don't make friends because I'm just trying to get something out of that person. So that's a waste of their time. You know, if you're just trying to friend them just to sell or buy them a house with them. Um, so think about that as you're going through um, the conversations and meeting people. So some uh, examples that helped me um, were sporting leagues, uh, meetup groups, charity events, veteran groups, book clubs, whatever you like doing that you can go and build genuine relationships that you're passionate about that, you know, and you're not going to like everybody you meet, but you can at least have common ground and say, yeah, I like softball. I like playing softball, right? That's something in common. So um, one of the um, cultivate messages, just an example here on the left Hey, Mary, I saw your daughter just won their softball tournament. That's amazing. I want to say congrats. Hope all is well. I have used that um, different name, but I have used that on a realtor um, in the Panhandle area. So, you know, just to kind of, you know, to talk with them about future, future real estate, because we're all colleagues in that industry. So that's how I stay in touch with people. I look at their page, send them a quick message and boom. All right, so another way to get your contacts is just do a complete phone dump. Um, so when you do that, you can, most CRMs, which is a contact management system, um, if you're with EXP, it's KV Core. If you're with another, there's Follow Up Boss, there's uh, Top Agent, there's other ones. Um, but you wanna take your phone and you wanna put it into the CRM and you can manually do it or you can import it. And then you want to set up the tasks and send out emails and texts introducing yourself as a soft hello with the system. Let them know because it may or may not come from your number, right? Depending on the system. And just introduce yourself and just let them know, hey, you're here to, um, as a realtor, if they need anything, you got them. All right. So social and internet leads. Um as you can see, I have my face almost on everything, right? And it's not because I love, I do love myself, right? But as everybody should, but it's because it's brand recognition, face with name, face with name, face with name. Um, so when, when I see people that say, oh, don't, don't have your face on signs, I'm like, why? That, that's your face is your biggest brand you can have, your name and your face, right? So you know, take care of yourself, um, but also like, just make sure you put your face on everything. So how I, how I did it is I had um, a government, hold on one second. I had a government job um, in, um, when I started building real estate. So I had some expendable income. So what I did is I was like, man, I got to build my sphere fast. I got to build it as fast as possible and get my database filled. So I bought some Google and Facebook leads, spent a lot of money and they didn't really go anywhere for two reasons. One, the intent for inter Facebook and Google leads are very, very low. The intent is higher on Google leads, but Facebook, they're mostly like looky-loos, -loo, looky right? They're just like, they're not really on Facebook to buy. But you do, I mean, the conversion's like, I don't know, one to 3% or something. But the other reason why I failed is because I didn't have any follow-up and I didn't have my systems in place through my CRM, like the tasks, emails, text messages. So if you're working with a CRM, which I highly, if you're not working with a CRM, get with a CRM, pick one that you like. Uh, we like KV Core and Follow-Up Boss, but... Um, and set up your tasks and reminders and definitely do that. Cause if you're doing everything on a piece of paper and an Excel spreadsheet, things are gonna get lost. And, or if you're really organized, they don't get lost. Your life's just gonna get harder and harder as that database grows and grows, right? So um, so with social media, oh, did I get... all right. So Facebook and Google are both lead sources as well. Um, Instagram as well. I've actually gotten leads from Snapchat and Instagram referrals and clients. So um, I recommend posting on social media um, 10 to 15 times a day. And that doesn't mean like posting on your wall. You should post on your wall uh, uh, five to seven times a day or a week, excuse me. 
and then 10 to 15 times a day on your stories. Because what you're doing with the stories is you're painting your lifestyle. You're walking people through your day. How my day usually starts, again, I told you guys at the beginning, my schedule is a little off, but how my day usually starts is I wake up, make my daughter food, uh, make sure she's ready to go for school, bring her to school, and then I go to the gym. And that's when I start. Once in a while, I'll take a picture of like a cup of coffee or if, it, if the water looks really beautiful, I'll take a picture of that. But it's mostly, mostly starts at the, the gym because for me, my daily routine is drop her off at school and then my day starts gym, you know, so I'll take a gym picture or, you know, I'll just take something funny or like a sauna picture or, and I'll follow it up with what I'm listening to at the gym. So I listen to mostly like hip hop, EDM, um, a little bit of country at the gym. Um, and then when I'm in the sauna, I listen to a book. So I take that 20 minutes, listen to the book. And I always post that stuff and it walks people throughout your day. So I'll take a picture of like some classes we're doing or um, some food, stuff like that. And you don't want it to be all like business oriented because people know you're in business after a few couple posts. You want, they want to know you. They want to get inside, like pull the, pull the curtain back, get inside your life, right? And if you're, you're, if your guys' social media, I will say this, if your guys' social media is private, I would make it unprivate because it's called social media, right? To be social, um, not to waste all your time daily on it, right? That's why I had, I had to get rid of TikTok because I was like, this is too addicting. I was just scrolling through the reels. I was like, man, this is bad. But um, so yeah, so just 10 to 15 times a day and it kind of walks them through your life. Um, if you don't have things to post, you can go to other people's stuff and repost it to your story, you know, just share it. And you know what you do? Tag them, tag them with, uh, you'll just do the little at sign and then type their, uh, handle name for Instagram or Facebook and boom, you tag them in the post, they get notified and they'll reshare it most of the time. And if they reshare it, now you just entered into their network into their database, right? Because there's going to be ones or twos that may click on your post, click on that and be like, Hey, who's this? Um, who's Marcy, you know? Okay. Let me go follow Marcy. So it's very important that you have like in LinkedIn too, as well. So I didn't say LinkedIn, but LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, if you have a WhatsApp, I think you can post on their story as well. So all that. So Andrew, can I ask you something real quick? So with yeah. the, so with stories, because I haven't used stories much at all. I am posting a lot on social media. I'm using a lot of social media. But do you post the same thing on Instagram and Facebook? Just like duplicate it? I mean, as far as the stories go, pretty much? I, I do. Um, once in a while, I'll switch it up because sometimes I get burned out of posting too, right? So yeah. I'm like, okay, so I'll take a picture on Instagram and I'll download it and I'll put it on Facebook or Snap and Snapchat. But sometimes I mix them up where they're not the same um, because most of the people that follow me, follow me on all platforms or, but Snapchat is your sphere. You're going to get a lot of creepers on Snapchat because Snapchat is full of creepers. I just want to be, especially women, just be careful. Right. But there's, those are all contacts from your phone. So that is a great place to market yourself. Um, okay. but if people's numbers change, just know that you may not be marketing to who you thought that number was going to, right? Cause if Jeff, you and I grew up together, we had the same number growing up, then you change your number. Well, now it just now associates that number to whoever has it now. So, okay. So yeah. stories are big though. I just haven't used stories much. Yeah. I mean, stories, reels, um, because what they do now with reels is if you post a good reel on Instagram, it automatically posts it to Facebook for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, a great person that, you know, and when I say great, I actually scroll through his stuff sometimes because he posts so much, but he's always on my feed. He's there is Ray Higdon. Yeah. Ray Higdon is a great guy to follow for that. I, I, I get annoyed of him, but what he's doing is working because he's always there, Right. And some of the stuff he posts is really funny or it's like, or it's like educational. So 
Uh, really like it. So Ray Higdon, um, he posts them all the time. Cool. Um, all right. So weekly emails and newsletters. So I use constant contacts for weekly newsletters. I have one for Florida. I have one for Colorado. And um, I have, if, they, if you spend like 50 or 80 bucks, they'll, they'll build you out a template for you. So all you have to do is plug and play. So I built my first couple through that template and then I hired it out and I pay somebody uh, $25 per week to send that out. Um, what they do is they send out events that are happening in that area, family, family events, and then also adult events, right? Because I have, I potentially have a lot of single people on my, that want to just go out and network and get a beer or a good bite to eat. So St. Patty's Day is, right? St. Patty's Day is coming up this week, right? Like two days. Yeah. So, Thursday. yeah. So what we do is, um, is we'll send out, you know, top five places in Colorado Springs to get St. Patty's Day meal and beer. And it's like, okay, cool. Now you just provided them with a place, especially if you got new clients that are new to the area or thinking about coming and maybe in the, the area, you know, you gave them something to do because, I don't know about you guys, but I suck at thinking about stuff to do. I'm like, man, there's nothing to do. I'm always like that with my daughter. So now I'm like scrambling on a Friday or Saturday to bring her to do something. Cause I didn't really, there, I always think there's nothing to do, but there's tons to do. We just don't think about it sometimes. All right. So weekly newsletters to the whole database. So my Colorado one goes out to everybody. My Florida one goes out to everybody. I have 16,000 people in my database that it goes out to. It, my open rate is about 20%, which is really, really good. When I first started, it was really, really low, right? But consistency, I've gotten three referrals in the past 12 months from that, uh, two buyers and one referral. So um, it's been really, really good to me. And it costs me, I don't know, hundred bucks a month, maybe, you know? So it's definitely worth it. Um, so put all your buyers and sellers info into Homebot or something similar. So Homebot, as soon as you buy or sell a house, right? It's mostly going to be for future sellers or current buyers. So once your buyer closes on a house, I put all their info straight into Homebot. Boom. Now they're getting a monthly digest of what their home is worth. And um, if you partner with a lender, there's some lenders out there that have uh, corporate discounts. So instead of paying 40 bucks a month, you'll pay like 25 or 30. So you save like 10, 15 bucks there. So what, you, what that does is it tells them what their market's doing. So 80920 in Colorado Springs, your, your markets, your appreciation has been three to 5% or something. Okay, boom, this is what you can rent your house out for. And then it also does what, what I really like because I'm in this space and I, and I want my clients to get to know all the info, all the information to make the most money or what their goals to meet their goals. It gives them Airbnb data too. So it is great. Um, it's a great tool. Um, and there's other tools out there, but I personally, I think there's nothing like Homebot. I mean, it just, it just, for, it just forewarned me. A guy reached out to me last night, was like, hey, should I, um, do you have any buyers for my house? Looked up the house. It's a $700,000 house in Colorado. Of course we have buyers. Shoot, there's buyers everywhere, you know? So we pushed it out to my team uh, this morning and we're trying to get a buyer, get him, uh, get in there to look at it. But what it also did this morning is it told me who has a potential for refis. So I'm going to download that list and I'm going to provide that list to my lender. And my lender is going to now love me, right? He pulls one or two of those out of there that they can refi. Man, you know, I'm always just constantly trying to provide value because the more you value you provide, the more you get in return. Can I ask you something real quick, Andrew, on HomeBot um, with that? Because I know Aaron Ken, you know, Aaron, um, I mean, he swears by HomeBot. Same thing. He's used it for a while. We're just, we're getting it set up right now, my wife and I. Um, you put all your past clients in there. Is that primarily who you use it for? Yeah, and what I do is I also uh, download clients from Red X. So 
Um, okay. I use Red X, um, used to use Vulcan 7. So what I would do is I would download that, that list that comes out, refreshes daily, and I throw them into HomeBot. And now if I can't get in touch with them, now they're getting emails for, from me. Plus I add monthly from HomeBot, plus I add them to my, um, my uh, weekly newsletter. They can unsubscribe. And, you know, once in a while I get emails that say, hey, how'd you get my information? Well, it's public record. It's on here, right? Um, and they say, well, can you unsubscribe me? So I just unsubscribe them. You know, some people sure. are combative about it, but how else are we supposed to deal our, build our database, right? Right. Yeah, so um, that's what I do. And then um, to stay in contact or to send gifts out, we... We hired a, a marketing team that does a lot of this stuff that I'm sharing with you now, like the HomeBot, um, Rocket more or Rocket Notes, uh, Boomerang. Rocket Notes used to be Banner Season. I think they might have changed their name again. But if you type in Banner Season and then ditch the basket, that's the program we used to use. It's a two-year client nurture. Every three months, it sends them a gift, a gift card. Ask them for a referral ask them for it, ask them to post it on social media and tag you. So it asks all the questions for you and my clients do it, right? What's the name of it? Uh, banner season. Okay. And that's the one that does the gift. Yeah. It's called ditch the baskets or ditch the basket. Okay. And it's about $600 and it'll send out a gift every quarter. Uh, it'll send out initial closing gift and a gift every quarter, like gift card and stuff like that. Like I had a client reach out to me that said, Thank you so much. We haven't had a date night. We're using the uh, movie gift card you sent us. And be honest with you, I didn't even know, right? Like I didn't know, but you know, they posted on social media, tagged me and they are repeat clients of mine. So um, $600. And if I know there's different markets and price points and stuff like that, they have cheaper ones than that. So don't $600 may break the bank on some, but they have cheaper ones. So Boomerang, all my clients go into Boomerang too. Boomerang is a monthly uh, postcard that goes out. That's like a buy one burger, get one free type deal, right? It gives them deals for their local area. This is great for new. This is great for clients new to the area. You know, I even add, I've even added people that chose not to list with me or buy with me. And I added them to this and they've still texted me and thanked me and stuff like that. Right. So, and then client appreciation events. So it, even if you're a, a solo agent, team, brokerage, whatever, do client appreciation events, uh, monthly, quarterly, whatever you can, you have the capacity to do and just get everybody in a room. And we've gone to local breweries with food trucks and um, just, you know, everybody gets a two, two beer tickets brings everybody together. The agents love it. They get to be around their clients again. So really good. All right. Join and network in your company's referral, uh, networks, spots, whatever. I know every company has a place for referrals, right? We use workplace for ours. Um, I'll actually be speaking on Labco agents tomorrow. So if you're free, I'd love to see you there building um as a new agent in a brand new market um so get on there network with people my first year i sold 22 homes and i did 90 percent of that don't quote me on that if you look up my numbers but 90 percent of that was from the referral network at at our brokerage so it it was amazing. And right. I think when I started with our brokerage, there was like 90 agents or 80 agents or something in Colorado Springs and nobody was on it. I'm like, what? I'm like, Oh, I'm going to maximize. I'm going to capitalize on this. Right. And I just started, I went to them and I found, all right, who's a top agent in Chicago. Who's a top agent in San Diego. Who's a top agent in Tampa. And I just started tagging them whenever I'd see referrals for them. And what do they do? Tag me, right? Without even talking to them. You know, I was like, oh, they look like a sharp person. You know, they've done well for, and then if somebody does well for me, I always refer them, you know, because I want to keep that relationship open. Um, so join your referral network, join lab coats, build business through referrals, because that's the most powerful business you can have is referrals. 
All right, partners with lenders and vendors. So um, you want to build a relationship with your lenders and vendors. So where they're sending you referrals, right? My first year, I sent all my business to one guy and it turned out to be a one-way street. You know, he wasn't sending me business back. So I found a new vendor and lender. You know, I, I don't have time to... Um, I want a two-way relationship. Same thing with a romantic relationship. It's got to be two-way or it doesn't work, right? Same thing with business. It's got to be two-way or it doesn't work. So um, be patient, be real with them. And, you know, I feel like if, if your lenders are sending you business, you're doing a great job because they have a million other people they could be sending lenders to or uh, referrals. Hey, Andrew, quick question on that. Do you yeah. feel like um, when you're dealing with your agent, if, um, if lenders just are reciprocating by sponsoring events for you, doing those type things, do you feel like that's as valuable um, as sending referrals to you? Um, I do, right? Um, we have them do open houses with us. We have them sponsor client appreciation events with us. Um, we have all that just because I do think it's valuable. It's valuable to the pocket, right? Cause we're all trying to save money, right? The less money we can spend the better, but it gets your clients. Cause a lot of times your clients have never met the lender that work, helped them make one of the largest purchases in their lifetime. Right? So now it puts a face to the name. If it's not the same lender, okay, they may need to refi in the future, right? So maybe they have some questions about refining to a conventional to free up their VA loan so they can buy their next location. So yeah, I think it's um, it's good for them to sponsor. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that's, I've always got like lenders only have so much business to pass around because their clients are realtors, you know, mostly. But I've, okay. I have felt that way too. You know, if I've got a couple of partners who are willing to... Um, to invest in events and things like that, then I've always felt that was a, you know, if you can't give me leads, then that's the least we expect to have some reciprocal business. Yep. Yep. Um, though they were like, they were like buying me uh, baseball tickets and I'm like, I want referrals. I can buy myself baseball tickets, right? I want clients. I want relationships. I want that. I don't need to go to a baseball game. So, you know, so that's kind of where I draw the line. Um, but uh, all right, so geo farming um, with door knocking, flyers, postcards, and phone calls. So um, I use Red X for my phone calls. If anybody wants to jump on it, um, hopefully this is okay. If you message me, I have a referral link for you. I'm an ambassador for Red X. Um, so if you have any questions, I can do a training for you, or I can just send you the hour long call session that I did that I share with everybody. Um, I make like four contacts, add them into HomeBot, all that stuff. But if you door knock every open house or neighborhood and you flyer drop with you, some agents or some lenders, um, postcards get expensive, right? So I don't send that many postcards, but they do work. I send, send them through Boomerang, but to farm a whole area, it could get expensive because you need to send those monthly, right? But it costs you nothing but time really to go out and door knock. If you add flyers in there, you can get flyers for like 19 to 29 cents a piece. Um, and then phone calls with the phone calls. It's basically just a soft pull. It's just like a soft phone call. Hey, this is Andrew Vos with eXp Realty. Our team just sold a house um, in your neighborhood and you can use our brokerage, right? Because if you look up on KV core, you can see all the listings for your brokerage. So you can say, see if there's any sold and be like, Hey, we just sold a property in your neighborhood. Uh, just want to see if there's anything in the world I could do for you. Great. I'd love to stay in touch with you through email. Uh, what's your email? And you know, you're going to get people that say, no, don't call me or hang up on you, blah, blah, blah. That's that's you get people like that walking on the street. So, um, don't worry about it. Just go through the numbers and you know, the more you get your face and name, and voice out there, the more you become the market expert. Um, circle prospecting, that's kind of what I just talked about. We used a dialer for that. Um, let me go back actually. So for the flyers, 
for the flyers, you should start with a introductory flyer. Like who am I? Or meet your agent type deal. Right. And get a little bit of vul- like be vulnerable on there. You know, you don't have to tell them your whole life story. Like, yeah, I went to jail for jaywalking. Right. You know, you don't have to do any of that, but like, just say like, Hey, I'm, I'm Andrew. I'm from upstate New York. I have a beautiful six-year-old daughter. Um, I'm in your area frequently, you know, we hang out at this park, blah, blah, blah. If there's anything in the world I could do for you, you know, maybe give a little bit of your credentials and how you can serve them. What, what do you bring to the table? That's different than other people. All right. So circle prospecting. Hey, I, we just sold a property at one, two, three banana street. Just want to see if there's anything in the world I could do for you. Um, you guys have heard circle prospecting before. It's not new. Um, it's just t- letting them know that you're there. And, you know, I usually open it up with, Hey, it's Andrew Vost with EXP Realty. How you doing today? Great, man. This weather is crazy. It doesn't even feel like Florida. I feel like I'm back in Colorado, you know, kind of chuckle because we, everybody in your area can relate to the weather, right? If the weather has been great, we can all relate. If it's been bad, we can all relate, you know? And then um, I just say, Hey, I don't want to take up a lot of your time. And, but here, we just sold a property in your neighborhood, got over uh, $60,000 over asking price. That is once it's closed, it's public information. So you can, you can say that, um, go from there. And then expireds and FISBOs, expireds and FISBOs, they're hard, right? But it's a good way to build your database. Um, we use Red X, MLS, Zillow, all that stuff, but just know that their guard is already up. The expireds, they're either pissed off at their realtor because they don't feel like their realtor did a good good job or they're mad at themselves because they didn't listen to their realtor about pricing or, right, um, or it just didn't sell, you know. Um, Fizbos, they obviously think they can do it themselves and there's a lot of people that have done it themselves, but, you know, they have their guard up as well. But it's all about value. How much value can you provide? And that is my um, social media presentation. Tons of stuff, Andrew. I kind of burned through it. You're good, man. You're good. I know you're on a time crunch here. Um, Guys, real quick before Andrew leaves, any specific questions for him? And then we'll open it up here for some discussion. But some great things in there. A lot of things to chew on and think about. Any thoughts, comments, questions for Andrew before he goes? Don't be shy. Anybody? Anybody? Hey, I'll uh, I'll put my Instagram uh, handle here. If you guys want to reach out, um, shoot me a message. Follow me. I'll follow you back. And Andrew, if you could, I use I used Red X a long time ago. It's been a long time. Can you send me your info on Red X? I, I'm gonna yeah. get back in touch with you on that. Okay. Okay. That'd yep. be awesome. Just send that to me. So I know you got to run. So. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, if you guys here, I'm gonna put my number here too. If you guys need anything, want to reach out, pick my brain on any systems, uh, feel free. Cool. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, yes, thank sir. you. Andrew. Appreciate it. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Guys, stick around here. Let's keep talking. Um, Andrew, thank you. Have a good day. Um, let's open up some mics. Um, talk about this. Who's, who's using social media right now as far as like just really actively working that for your business? Come on. Nobody? I know you are. Robert? What, what kind of stuff are you doing, Robert? Can you just open up and share a little bit? Um, I mean, sometimes it's hard to always be posting stuff about what you're doing every day. So I kind of supplement that with uh, list reports, sometimes have shareables that they come out with daily. Um, I'll just put up, you know, random tips about buying or selling or financing if I don't have something that comes to mind in terms of a post. Are you doing it primarily on Facebook or Facebook, Instagram, multiple platforms? What are you doing? Um, I'll do both, mostly Instagram. Every now and again, I try to do like one or two a week on Facebook. Okay. Okay. Are you, um, do you have a business page and a personal page, both or, okay. So with all of your real estate stuff, how much, what's the ratio do you think? Are you post, you're not, are you posting all of it on both or just primarily your business page or how do you work that? Put the real estate related stuff on my business page. But then as uh, he had mentioned that I would take that post and I would share it on my personal page. So my sphere of the people that I know on my personal page will still see those things. 
Um, but I try to keep them a little bit more separate. So right. all of the real estate stuff stays on the professional page. And then um, I'll just share that to my story on my personal page. Okay. That's good. Well, and then it would lead them back to your business page, the ones that aren't on there. That's exactly. a good idea. Okay. That's good. Good. Very cool. 10 to 15 times a day. I was like, wow, like that's a lot, you know? But yeah. I get it with this story. And I will tell you, Andrew, seriously, like he, you know, last year, I mean, he, he's, he did 264 deals, I think, his first three years, you know, and, and most of that was him a lot. You know, he did start building a team. So, you know, after, you know, I forget what the time frame was. I did an interview with him here recently uh, on my page and he eventually started building a team and now he's built a traditional team because it was way more than he could handle. But, you know, a lot of it came through just, you know, social media and doing all the stuff that he talked about there. Just super active on it, you know. Um, I liked his idea about like, you know, because I do this, I, uh, you know, commenting when people comment on my posts. I might like the comments, but it's very rare that I comment back. And that's something I picked up, like comment back or go comment on their post and mm -hmm. get a conversation going a little bit. You know, um, I know the algorithms work where all of a sudden now they start seeing more of your posts, which is good. Um, Emmanuel, uh, so you unmuted yourself. What, what, what thoughts do you have on, on all this stuff? Oh, I can't hear you, Emmanuel. I'm sorry. Can't hear you. Maybe it's your mic. Okay. Good stuff. Um, I'm so, Let's see. No, I thought you were coming back on there. Um, what are the thoughts do you guys have with this? Hey, Anybody, Jeff, I was going to go make ahead. a comment because I'm starting to do exactly what you know, you're doing with the social media and so forth. Going to start the interviews next week. But the part that he talked about that just, I don't know if as we've gotten older, all of us that are, I don't know if it's 50s, 40s, whatever, but to do the post about yourself, that is just the hard, hard you know what I mean? I guess yeah. that's just a generation growing. I can't even imagine because I, I personally, I laugh at all that, all that everybody putting on what they're having for lunch with it. That's just so bizarre to me. So it's, that's the hardest part I can see with that to try to do what he's doing. But I wanted to make a comment on something else. I just got to learn. I want to say it was last Thursday. I was on a training. And for those that may not know it, we've got the iBuyer platform. And I got agents ask me all the time or when I'm interviewing agents, they're saying, man, I wish I could just get more listings. Our iBuyer platform, here's what people are doing. If you're not familiar with this, you can get certified through our company. Doesn't take you very long to get certified to be an iBuyer. You could continue to, you could put information out, whether or not you want to farm an area, whether you do it through social media, that you can get them a cash offer within 24 hours and the house would be sold within 10 days. Well, you put that out there and keep sending information out, you're going to have enough eight, enough potential prospects biting off and wanting to know what the cash offer is. The guy who was doing the training was Sean Kokoski, and he was saying that if you do that, and then you go sit down with that client 24, 48 hours later, give them their cash offer, and they just say, hey, I happen to run comps in your area, and we can get this much more. And they said 97% of the time, they don't go with the cash offer. They end up choosing you as an agent if they decide to sell the house, because you just now opened up the door because they're curious about the cash offer. They see they can make 30, 50, 70,000 more on the traditional route, potentially choose you as an agent. Now you start getting listings. I just, I'd never really heard that. I mentioned that to two or three agents like, man, that's a great idea, yeah. but you got to get certified. Has anybody done that and got certified to be an iBuyer or to use the iBuyer platform? Anybody? Jeff, have you, were you familiar with that? I am familiar with it. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. You know, I know Lane was looking at it. Um, we haven't done, we, I know several people here that have done it, you know, and been certified. Um, John, I've done it as well. Have you, Brian? Yeah. And I've used it on a couple deals. Um, we ended up not getting the listing. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm on my phone, but, um, but it, but it, it does get you on the door. Um, and most of the iBuyer stuff that I've had that's come through this is, is it's been referrals through eXp honestly, because they knew I was an iBuyer and I was in a territory that they didn't really have anybody um, set up to do it. So um, I took it on and um, um, we did not get the listings, but um, it got my foot in the door. And the, and the, and the two that I actually done, uh, um, the one guy pulled his house, didn't sell it. And the other guy sold it himself. He was getting, he was, he, I think he used this more for the information to try to do it as a physical. Cool. Hey, Jeff. I, saw your, I saw your message, Maria, that you're certified. Um, go ahead. Who is it? It's me. Uh, I think I, I, I fixed my microphone. Okay. Situation. Yeah. 
I just wanted to say, uh, since we were all talking about uh, social media, um, as odd as it may seem, um, I am on Instagram, Facebook, but somehow lately LinkedIn, uh, ever since I met Sean uh, Corbett, LinkedIn has been my go-to social media uh, source and it has produced uh, better results than any of the uh, sources I just mentioned. Uh, I'll just give you an example. Lately, I've been seeing um, a local realtor and she's doing uh, these short little video clips of uh, lead generation. Um, I forgot her name, but regardless. So uh, what I got from that was, uh, I'll just give you one of the things that we, uh, made a video of and it's contacting people you used to work with. And by doing so, um, I have, two good future clients right now. Um, we're looking at houses near Cedar Creek. Uh, he happens to want to buy a house down there and he may even list his house in the future. So it's just, um, that's just an example. There are others, but uh, you know, it, it, it's all on how you communicate with people. Um, how often are you posting on LinkedIn? I don't even post that much. It's just reaching okay. out to people I, I, I worked with. And now I'm engaging with people that are in the fire protection industry. Okay. Um, I even made a post not too long ago about how I am not just a real estate agent. I am a licensed fire alarm inspector in the state of Texas. And I basically reached out to everyone in the fire protection industry in all of Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, also, I have youth in connections. Uh, and I happen to, I used to work for Johnson Controls, one of the biggest uh, building automation and fire protection companies, not just in the United States, but in the whole world. So that's what I'm doing. Gotcha. One of the things you mentioned, you know, like that realtor that's doing the videos, like the lead generation stuff, like one of the things I would tell you guys, like there's just, you know, some ideas like for, you know, a training I was on here recently, like how you could even like, like pick your town, like wherever, wherever you live. And, you know, here's, I don't know, you know, five of the best coffee shops or here's five of the best restaurants that you like or whatever. And, you know, to go and do a video out front of that restaurant or you know even to ask the you know go in and meet the the owner of the restaurant you know hey i'm a realtor here in town i'm, I'm reaching out to a lot of people got people moving here i've got a youtube channel that i'm creating you know wanted to do a quick video on your restaurant just to promote your restaurant would that be cool of course it's cool they're, they're gonna let you know, you could interview the the manager of the restaurant for five minutes on like a quick and put a video together that video is going to work 24 hours a day seven days a week you know, and you could post it and create a YouTube channel, whatever. And here's like, you know, what, you know, you know, my, my 10 favorite restaurants in Colorado Springs for me. And you, and you create a playlist on there. And now you start sending some of those things out to potential clients that are moving in here from other places, leads that are coming in from out of town. You know, you could do that with anything, you know, um, whatever, you know, places, I don't know, 10, five places to go with your kids in Colorado Springs, you know, um, whatever, the five best this, the five best that, whatever, and just go do some videos. One of the things I know, you know, Grant Cardone does this, you know, he'll take and just, you know, here's a topic that you want to talk about and he'll just record himself and just start talking, you know, because he knows about whatever this topic is. So he'll talk for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes and he'll record that video and then he'll take that video and chop it into, you know, 10 three minute segments. You know, so now you've got here's a 30 minute talk that he just did talking about some topic and he made 10 videos out of it. And just to post those now every few days, another three minute video, because people are going to sit down most of the time and watch a 30 minute video, but they'll watch three minute videos and you can create this content really pretty quickly. You know, and, and you know, you guys are all experts in different areas of, of what you do with your real estate. There's so many ways to do it. We just, we don't think about this stuff. And I think to create a YouTube channel, you know, there's so many ways to do that. That's another part of social media that, that, um, that Andrew did not talk about. Um, but to create that channel and to create some different playlists on there, 
you know, that you can do as a realtor and you could, you know, different tips that you could give on financing, different tips you could do on, you know, whatever things to watch out for in your home inspection. And just, you could do, there's so many different topics you could come up with, but do some things just even locally in your community, which now is going out to all these people that you're bringing in internet leads, all this kind of stuff, people you're connected with on social media, you know, that are looking to move to wherever you are. Um, I liked what he said too, in terms of like, I noticed this this last weekend. It was all the, the, a lot of the high school state championships, basketball championships were going on here in Colorado. And I saw a bunch of my different friends who were posting about, you know, their son or their daughter, you know, whatever their team just got third place in state or first place in state. We have one here recently uh, locally right here. And I thought about that, you know, to comment on there, to just comment on that post, you know, hey, congratulations, whatever, that's awesome, whatever, or to send a direct message to that person something like that, just to get that engagement going, whatever. I mean, there's, there's so many reasons or things that you could comment on and start getting that interaction going back and forth and just building that rapport and it's, you know, and be genuine about it, you know, and over time, what does that do? I mean, you know, they start thinking about you when it terms of their, their neighbors looking to sell, Hey, you should call, you know, Sean, you know, man, you know, Sean's a great guy, man. We've been in touch now for a couple of years. It's just that kind of stuff. But Angie, what what can you unmute yourself, Angie, real quick, not to put you on the spot. What what kind of thoughts do you have off of just some of this comments, some of the things we've been talking about here? Just anything, you know. I know you've been engaged with this. What what thoughts do you have? Are you using social media very much right now? I'm conservative. I'm not one to be on it all day long. Sure. Uh, I try to do maybe five posts a week. Okay. Um, I'll always post something about a closing or under contract. And then reshare any maybe some educational stuff, but some personal things about the community or my life, just so people know what type of person I am. But I'm very conservative. I'm not one. Sure. I probably won't ever go that route. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I still have good ideas and tips on. I like the idea of maybe engaging more with other people's posts. That's probably what I'll focus on. Just sure. the people who do like to post, I'll just engage more with them. Sure. One thing I would say was with Facebook, and I think even Instagram, you're limited a little bit on time, but I know Facebook to go live on Facebook every now and then with something. And <laughs> once you do it a few times, it's not that bad. It's not that hard, but I will. Facebook loves it in terms of the algorithm with Facebook. They love it when you go live and they love it when you start getting some engagement, you know? Yeah. Maybe on St. Patrick's Day, I had a beer in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I wrote that down, you know, top, top top five St. Yeah. Patty's Day places to go, you know, whatever. I'm going to post that later today. I thought, you know, there's just different things you can think about. Just, it's not real estate related, but you know, Kathy, go ahead. What were you right. saying? Well, I was just going to say, I, I feel like, you know, when I tell my agents this, I feel like it's critical that in today's day and time that we're going, and I need to do a better job, but we're going live on Facebook. You know, we need to do live videos because I, I believe at the speed at which um, social media is happening, if we as agents are not doing that, I feel like we are going to be left in the dust in the next couple of three years. And so, you know, that may be harsh, but I believe that's the reality of our business. Um, and so. I've I mean, been I'm, seeing you, you going know, live. You, you've that. been going live more lately. I've been going live some, I need to do a lot more, sure. but um but because I really do feel that way, you know, it is like social media is the, is the big thing now. And like you just said, the algorithms, they like the lives, you know, mm -hmm. so whether we like them or not, you know, or whether we're comfortable or not, I think it's a critical part of our business. And then one other last thing that I wanted to add is, is talking about YouTube. We didn't talk a whole lot about YouTube, but, um, you know, there's a, there's, if y'all go look on YouTube, Colorado's finest agent, like look what they're doing out there. Um, you can also look up like they're in Tennessee, the same people that train the uh, Colorado's finest agents people, they trained, if you go look up, you know, avoid like in YouTube, avoid moving to Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I'm at. You can kind of get a feel for the stuff that they're doing. Um, and I would say create a YouTube channel and then start doing some things like that. Like you can do the best restaurants, kind of all the stuff that we're talking about, but also a loop of, you know, things that catch people's attention. If they're moving to Colorado, if they're moving to Nashville or whatever city you're in, like, 
you want to avoid these neighborhoods or avoid these areas. And we got to be careful what you're talking about when you're talking about that based on your sure. housing laws. But go watch a couple of those people's videos and see what they're doing because the title is all about just drawing them in, right? It's all about just drawing them in and you're doing the video. So you want to become the expert in your area. And these guys that are teaching some of this YouTube strategy, like their doggone business went from like 5 million to 90 million in Exploding. volume. Yeah. Um, and by they're using some of these strategies, some of those sites I just gave y'all to check out. For sure. Well, one of the things guys I would tell you to do is just, you know, I mean, again, it's not like there's all this new stuff going on. There's, there's new stuff happening, but you can go back and just go find Tina call, you know, EXP agent, huge on video. Now, again, if you, she had a post back in December and I was going to try and find it, but I have to scroll way back. I'll find it. Um, she shared about how her, her mentor was telling her to use more video, use more video. And she fought it. She did like three videos total, like in 2000, I don't know, like seven years ago. And she had like 10 subscribers, whatever it was, you know, she did three more videos the next year. Um, she started doing it here about, I don't know, two years ago or something. And she's up to like six, seven, 8,000 subscribers now on YouTube. And there's people watching videos that she did three years ago. And that's the power of that video is it works 24 seven for you when you do it, you know, and you'll get people on there all hours of the day and night watching these videos. And it's just, it's like a marketing thing, but you could go back and watch Tina's videos, Kyle whistle, Dan beer. There's some big, big agents like on YouTube, just watch some of their videos. You could take one video, watch it three or four times and now go make your own video. Just duplicate what they did. It's okay. You can do exactly what they did. Just listen to it a few times and do, you know, get, get ideas from it and now go do those videos. And they don't have to be perfect. The nice thing about Facebook Live is that it's showing really who you are. In fact, the more unpolished you are sometimes, people are drawn to that. Okay, because, you know, what? like you're human at that point. There's not all the flashy bells and whistles and the intro videos and all this kind of stuff going on. Yeah, Kathy just posted, the more imperfect, the better. That's the nice thing about Facebook Live. You stumble around a little bit, it's okay. One of the last thing I'll share with you, and we're going to go here in a second. I, I'm working right now on building my Instagram followers, okay? And because uh, I'm building this. One of the things that I've been doing is with, you know, I do this every day. It takes me, if I keep up with it every day, it takes me 15, 20 minutes. What I'm doing right now is all the people that are following me, you know, I send them a personal video to thank them for following me. So what I do is I, and I don't do it through Instagram. What I do is I just go on my phone and I go to the camera app and I hit the video button and, you know, just put it back on me and, you know, whatever. So, you know, Hey, Kim, Jeff Morrell here. We just connected on Instagram you know, a little bit ago. Thank you so much for the follow. I'm going to follow you back. Totally appreciate it. I'm a realtor in Colorado Springs, been doing it for 20 years. I just, I give a quick 30 second Pete, like little testimony about myself, you know, been in the top 20 in town, had the number one Keller Williams team for five years, been at EXP for four years. It's been awesome. If I can ever help you at all in your business or any, you know, anything about Colorado Springs, making a move here, would love to help you. Um, you know, thanks again for the follow. Have a great day. And it, now again, and I personalize it. Don't just do a video and then just, you know, just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. I personalize it for everybody. You know, that way they know it's coming directly for them. I can't tell you how much interaction I'm getting with that. You know, they, they'll reply back. Wow, thank you so much. You know, that was great. Thanks for the video. Yeah, whatever. Just you get this interaction going with some of those people. And so it takes a little bit of time. But if I do it on a daily basis, it takes me 15, 20 minutes. If I wait for three or four days and I don't do it now, it's an overwhelming you know, hour and a half of doing these videos. But I'm doing that with everybody. Yeah, Kathy said, happy birthdays. Just send them a video. And you could do that with any clients that you have. Just do a video and then just text message them the video. Okay? Um, something to think about. You could do that through Messenger on Facebook. Just these personal videos instead of just a chat or a message like that or even a text. I'm doing more video texting. Same kind of thing. Because it just engages. And here's what I will tell you this. Don't, you know, do your video and send it. Don't do it and watch it. Why should not why should you not watch that video before you send it? Angie, why shouldn't you watch that video before you send it? Because oh, you won't send it. <laughs> exactly. You'll do it again and you'll do it again. And 20 minutes later, now you finally send the video, whereas you could have sent 10 more videos over those 20 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. But to send out a text video like that. Again, engaging 
with that from video. I'm telling you, that's been that's huge right there, what that does. And you could do that for birthdays, anniversaries, you know, again, somebody with a trip, a congratulations on their son's basketball tournament, just all kinds of things that you could do like that, personalize it through Instagram, through Facebook Messenger, you know, just texting people like that, but do a video text, it just makes it that much more personal. And you will get a lot of engagement with that. Something to think about. Even with your clients, you know, um, totally. I will do that every while well, with clients, right? That, or a process that I'm maybe working with, not even trying to pick new business up. But again, it's something different that just sets you apart. Like I don't do it every time, but usually at least once during the engagement, you know, working with a client, I'll do a video text message yeah. versus just texting them information or picking up the phone and calling. For sure. Good stuff. Any last comments, questions, anybody? Appreciate you guys being on here. Um, just a reminder for um, for those of you in Colorado Springs, we have our lunch and learn tomorrow at uh, View House. Uh, we are doing a happy hour on Thursday, St. Patty's Day um, from four to six. And then um, Thursday morning, we'll be back on here, different, um, a different uh, ID number, but uh, for the agent attraction training, those of you that are participating in that want to do that, uh, we'll be back here next Tuesday, same time. So, okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Have a great day. Have a great week. If we can you help too. you at all, let Appreciate us know. It, Jeff. Okay. You got it, guys. Thanks, guys. Colorado Springs sounds like the place to be. Place to be, man. Come on out, man. I'll help you find a house. <laughs> I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> all right, man. We'll see you guys.